Right now, it's a Tuesday with Thompson. The PT's in the house. There he is. You're watching the show live at 973ESPN.com. You'll see the PT on the screen. And he, like August, appears via the Boardwalk Honda Hotline. I feel like um, I haven't seen you in a while there, Pete Thompson. But uh, yeah, I feel like forever. One so second. One, one second here, Peter. Sorry. Pete Thompson is brought to you today by Matt Blatt Nissan. The all-new Matt Blatt Nissan is now open on the Black Horse Pike in Egg Harbor Township next to Home Depot. Visit them online at mattblattnissan.com. All right, Peter, now we will bring you in and, and let you kind of speak. Yeah, the audacity. Hey, PT, want to come on the show? Don't speak. Don't speak. <laughs> well, I, you know, premature. That was the first time I was ever early for anything. Gil will t- attest to that. Hey, you know, I noticed that Matt Blatt Nissan the other day, Mike Gill, and I was like, oh, Matt Blatt, expanding the empire. I love to see it. Of course, you know, I was on my way to Chick-fil-A to stuff my face, but hey. You know. What'd you get? Oh, you're plain ch- what, you're, yeah, what yeah, is your I, what he, is your go to Chick Fil A meal? It's gonna no. be so plain and boring. I was say because he's Pete Thompson, so it's gotta I be. The, I get the classic sandwich, no no pickle. pickle. Yeah, knew you would right. be a no pickle. Now guy. I get the meal, but I can't drink the soda anymore, so I give that to Michael. So I get the soda and the fries, but I give the soda to Michael, and then I'll get eight nuggets for later. You yes. get the grilled nuggets or the regular nuggets? Oh, the regular nuggets. Oh, yeah, boo! Got to go regular. I go two number, I like number one sandwiches, but the pickle on it. And then the large fries. So I pretty much get the number one, and then I get an extra sandwich. Who does it? Okay, this blows my mind. That anybody goes to Chick-fil-A and gets anything other than the spicy chicken sandwich. I just get the standard Now, sandwich. that's interesting you bring that up, Gil, because I continue to screw up Michael's order, and I hear about it all the time. He wants the deluxe sandwich, but he wants it with pepper jack cheese. So my brain thinks... Pepper Jack, spicy, pepper Jack, spicy. So I'll say the number one with the spicy cheese, and inevitably I'll get like I'll get the spicy chicken sandwich and the pepper jack, or I completely forget the pepper jack angle and I get the sandwich and it's got the plain old cheddar. And either way, you know, he's not pleased. You ready for this? We actually ordered off Amazon a whole humongous jug of Chick-fil-A sauce. So now we just use it on everything. Really? It's amazing. Yeah. No, you gotta you got to be in the building whenever they deliver uh, Chick-fil-A here. There's, like, certain days where there's, like, a lot of stuff going on and, like, they'll have, like, a whole Chick-fil-A thing. And then all the sauces are left over. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. you could do that. Yeah, of course. I, I think I actually snagged one the other day. So I want to know from people out there listening, I want you to text in 609-403-0973 or if you're watching on the stream. There's only one order at Chick-fil-A. It is the number two spicy chicken sandwich. What is your go-to order at Chick-fil-A? Because I, I don't know anyone who gets anything other than when you say, hey, I'm going to Chick-fil-A, what do you want? I want the spicy chicken. No way. They can't use the You're Chick-fil-A sauce. You're the only two sauce. people that I've met who, who say no. Nah, PT, we're oh, in no. The There's way. a lot we're of people that get yeah. the original sandwich. Well, yeah. Josh doesn't course, count. I, I also Why not? Take off, I take off the lid now. I can't have that much bread, so I have to have the base. I can't have the, the top of the bun. Half uh, a bun. Oh, so you go half bun. Yeah. All right. So I still get some bun. Yeah, there's still some bunage, if you yeah. will. Bottom bun. Yeah, the bottom bun. Well, bottom bun. Bottom yeah. Bun. Are you top bun or bottom bun? Yeah, it's a big, uh, big what difference, PT. What makes people go with the bottom bun in that scenario over just saying, hey, I'm going to keep the top bun? I, I think it's because of the uh, way you hold it, right? Yeah. yeah, absolutely. The way you hold it, the way you can eat it. I mean, look, some sandwiches, not Chick-fil-A, but I'm not a big seeds guy. So if the bun has seeds on the top of it, I'll easily throw away the top. Just to go for the bottom, but you know that's me. All right, Pete Thompson. It's uh, Tuesday with Thompson here on the Sports Bash, ninety-seven three ESPN. So at this point, Carson Wentz has yet to be traded. However, there is some new news today, Peter, and that okay. is that the Bears are the front runners. And essentially, it sounds like, hey, if Carson Wentz says I don't have a problem going to Chicago, the Bears are ready to pull the trigger on that. So. Do you feel like there is resolve ready here? But and I got a follow up to that. But let's hear your answer to that. I mean, uh, do I feel like I'm ready for this to happen? I'm absolutely no, ready no, no, for no, this no. to happen. No. Ask the question again. I got distracted. So, do you happened. feel that him saying, "Hey, I have no problem going to the Bears," that that's going to be the fit and that that's going to be the one? I mean, ultimately, the the decision lies with Howie, right? Does he feel well, like not he's necessarily? Getting back? It, that, well, yeah, but if Wentz says I don't, I don't, I don't want to go there, then the Bears are essentially out. 
Yeah, which is unbelievable. I mean, how are how, how are we being held hostage by a guy that doesn't want to be here in the first place, and then he gets to dictate which team he wants to go to? Give me a break. I mean, I understand what, like, despite the reports, like, as we got toward the Super Bowl where it looked like it was going to happen, I think the reason that it's taking so long is because, you know, the Matthew Stafford deal ruined everything. I mean, that, that deal made people think, oh, we're going to get a one or a couple ones, or we're going to get this – Big wealth of riches. Did you see Carson Wentz this past season? I mean, there's not a lot of people out. And, and it's you know, you lose your leverage. There's no secret that the Eagles and their relationship with Wentz is fractured. So I, I just, to me, I, I think that's uh, you're living in la-la land. You're living in a fantasy world if you think you're going to get a Stafford-like package in return. And I think Howie is kind of leaning that way a little bit and was hoping for a bigger return, and that's why it's taken a while. You know, but ultimately at some point – you know, uh, you're costing yourself uh, value if you keep waiting. But you know what, PT? It's a lot of fun. There's nothing like <laughs> yes, when the I have hot cakes only, hot cakes with sausage <laughs> only, and a sausage biscuit, no egg. Two sausage is biscuits, he, no egg. Here you go, Billy. The, you're getting this live on the is radio. Is he in a drive through right now? All right, that was a live look in at Pete Thompson at the Chick fil A. <laughs> No, they don't have uh, they don't have sausage. No, maybe they do actually. Now that I think about, it. I, I think I've only gone to Chick Fil A for breakfast like twice in my life. I, I'd gone to the doctor in the morning, and so I was like, "Oh, Chick Fil A's close." I'll I've never it. been. I've Not never been either. to Chick Fil A for breakfast. Do they have coffee? I would imagine, they do, so, right? They do. They do. And and uh, keep in mind that the Chick Fil A that like you know they don't just have egg sandwiches. They also have like you can get a chicken sandwich if you want that early in the morning. No, this is interesting. Matt from Delaware says, hope all is well. I actually get the number one from Chick-fil-A, yes, but I get. he says I put Tabasco sauce on it, so maybe mm. it's the equivalent to number two. You got to go oh, Chick-fil-A. If you do anything but Chick-fil-A sauce at Chick-fil-A, you're just doing it wrong. No, their spicy buffalo sauce is superb. This is ridiculous. Yeah, they do have good sauces. All their sauces are good. The honey mustard looks weird, but tastes great. He says, oh, yeah, large fries and a lemonade, too. By the way, he throws that in there. Got to go Dr. Mm-hmm. Pepper. <laughs> uh, well, Dr. Pepper, I'm on I, I'm on a zero right yeah. now. So Coke Zero was my go-to. They're, they're one of the places that has a Coke Zero. But, you know, Dr. Pepper doesn't do a zero, but they do a diet, which is the equivalent to zero. But what right. is a diet? How What's different from diet Coke to zero Coke? Then? A lot. Ask Josh. <laughs> yeah, the sugar. I can't do anything with carbonation, but my dad, Gil, loves Diet Dr. Pepper. So you and my father are in the same uh, category now this, if you're in the Diet Dr. Pepper world. Yeah, uh, apparently the sweetener in this diet and the zeros are different. So whatever they use in diet, no good for you. Whatever they use in zero, much better for you. And on the keto diet, you can drink zeros, but you can't drink diet. Hmm. Do they still use NutraSweet, by the way? Remember when, uh, like, are you old enough, Gil, to remember when NutraSweet sent out uh, gumballs to every mailbox in America to try and introduce the artificial sweetener? I remember NutraSweet, but I haven't heard that term in a while. Although I do want to pop up this uh, comment on the screen from Chris Crawford, who is a Door Dashman's. Oh, he's a Door Dashman. Yep. And Door he Dash. says, okay. definitely number two is the most popular. And the nuggets are becoming increased. Now, when I go Chick fil A, I get the grilled nuggets but this because is, they are keto friendly. This is a flawed mindset, though. Maybe people who go in have the tendency of the number one. People who are door dashments have the tendency to go. Uh, like it's, we only. Have, Why would that? Well, be? I don't know. What, are you just, saying the door dashments are lazy? I need more. Sa- yes, I need to see more of a sample size here with everything added right. together. This gentleman Where are you guys it in. Getting the man on DoorDash, by the way, it's what? just DoorDash. There's he no wrote man. it, Pete Thompson. Pete, I'm are you looking it. at the screen, Pete? I'm a door am, dashman. But that doesn't mean it's right. <laughs> It's like you, this guy's never listened to the show. You don't get the show. Yeah, you don't listen to our show. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Look yeah, you should listen to, I listen to the show. I'm on twice a week, and I listen every time I'm in the car. Well, How then you would you? get this guy's reference then. Oh, well, I wasn't listening every minute of every hour. Well, I there you go. Chris you don't Crawford. listen to the show. Derso yeah. does. Yep. Derso does. Now, here's hey, a gentleman. I listen to your podcast, bro. Oh, thanks. What do yeah. you think? The entire <laughs> hour of it. <laughs> thanks. Yeah, how do you feel now? Uh, he said, what do you think? Yeah, I'm asking you a question. What do you think? I, th- I thought it was excellent. We need to work on Durso's framing. I mean, he's already a vertically challenged guy to begin with. We need to get him to 
fill the frame a little yeah, bit. Yeah, I don't more. understand how like, when someone's in the like frame, like this. they don't uh, they can't <laughs> tell that they're not framed well. Well, maybe we were looking at some, you know, an outline, a soft outline, or like other things around the screen. Maybe. All right. I'm just trying to stick up for my guy here. I'm a colleague I of Pete Thompson. I'm not ripping him. This is yeah. a text message. I'm a colleague of Pete Thompson's, and I agree with PT on everything. I even got him more into the office. But here, I'm with Gil, the spicy chicken sandwich. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, that's what she said. Yeah, that's my good friend. Yeah, I, I know exactly who sent that text message. He's a big fan of the show, good listener, and he loves The Office. And The Office is, I mean, come on, until they stuck it on Peacock and you had to go a in for it, I think. Uh, uh, not all the episodes are available anymore. It was great when it was on Netflix. So the tri- spicy chicken sandwich looks like the winner in this conversation. What a joke. I'm stunned. I'll be honest with you. I, I actually I am stunned. I don't think we sampled enough. I, think I agree. Put it on the, Chris Crawford is a door ball. dash yeah. man. He yeah, look. is the sample size for everyone. He delivers these all over the county. I think tomorrow, oh, okay. be- because it's so, so late in the I show. I get it now. He's the door dash man. I get it now. Thank you. I understand. It's, I've come full circle. Well, anyway, to get to the point <laughs> I wanted to make, Maybe, because it's so late into the show, we can start tomorrow off with a little bit of a poll, and we can get a four-hour sample size of yes, what is your Chick-fil-A yes. order. That I don't have a problem. That is much more scientific, bro. It's Thank you. Job. Well, by Thank the you. way, yeah. so if you're listening and you're just joining the conversation, the simple question is, what is your go-to order when you go to Chick-fil-A? Essentially, I don't know anybody who orders anything other than one or two. It's either you like the spicy chicken or you don't. No one orders three, four, five. Well, the nuggets. What are that? Like eight, eight or twelve? Well, the nuggets are different. Like I get the grilled nuggets because I'm doing keto. Now I don't right. get the grilled, the spicy chicken sandwich now. Right. This is if I was eating whatever I wanted to. Right. No, that's fair. I understand what you're saying. But yeah, it's always a number one with Chick Fil A sauce. Now Joey D says number one Chick Fil A sauce, add cheese sauce with nuggets and mac and cheese and a cookie. Jeez, am, am I doing Ooh. anything Joey before did. that? Am I ripping something on my way there? Joey like, D. What's going on there? That's how Pete Thompson and I got to the size that we were. <laughs> That's correct. <laughs> it's almost like he enjoyed a little dank burrito beforehand or something. You know what I'm saying? Uh, welcome to Chick Fil A. What would you like? All. Yeah, all, I will take, take one all. of everything. Uh, all right, Peter. So here's a conversation about Carson Wentz that I want to get back into and get your take on. Yes. So is Howie Roseman actually playing this the right way? In other words, he's talking to the Bears. The Bears quarterback is currently Nick Foles, who stinks, Mm -hmm. all right, and Mitchell Trubisky, who I think they're going to let walk. So he's saying, you want a quarterback, you you can call me. All right, we'll give you this. (laughs) All right, then you, you go out another season with Nick Foles and see how that works. Is he going to make them essentially say, I guess we don't have another option. We're going to have to give them what they want. Well, I think something has to happen. Like, and I've seen these reports too, like March 19th. And we're not, we're only about a month away from that. That's when they owe uh, Wentz a $10 million bonus. So this can't go on forever. You're not going to have players come in for spring work in a month or two and and have Wentz, you know, and have that not answered. So that this is going to get answered. But to your point, Gil, you know, uh, they're how he's trying to look. I understand what he's trying to do. He's trying to hold out for the best deal available. We get frustrated because we get these reports like, oh, a deal is imminent, a deal is close, and then nothing comes out of it, you know. Uh, but at, at the end of the day, and again, I, I think the Stafford trade, the Goff Stafford trade, really soured things because I think that might have colored Roseman thinking of, oh, maybe I can get more. And the reality, and I heard you guys talking earlier. Um, yeah, if they were able to. Uh, package Wentz and Ertz together. Uh, that might make Wentz comfortable. That might make the Bears comfortable. There's a lot of things that make sense if they could put those two guys together because we all know Zach Ertz is definitely not coming back, and it's only a matter of time until Carson Wentz. All right, another vote. Another back. vote for Spicy Chicken from the Joe Show, and uh, he's a great viewer watching on YouTube. Um, but I want to play this audio here from Jeff Darlington, who said this. So for me, when it comes to Wentz. Like, I just don't think if they're expecting to get the same amount of compensation that that's going to happen. That being said, I do think it eventually gets done. And to lay out the timeline here, March 19th is the deadline for them to have to pay Wentz $10 million of an offseason bonus. It's got to happen before March 19th. There you go. So you mentioned that date, March 19th. I will say this. I understand what he's saying. I don't 100% agree. Like, if someone's going to take him and give you two first-round picks, you'll pay the $10 million and then gladly take the first-round pick. Well, I like that you brought that up because something Josh and I were going uh, talking about earlier 
last week, I guess, or later last week, was, you know, would you sacrifice the picks if you can get less money off the books? Like, if you restructure the contract and you pull what Nick Foles did with the Jacksonville Jaguars and you take less of a cap hit, but that means your package in return isn't as big. So instead of that first, maybe you get a second, but you take less of a dead cap hit because they work this structure around it financially. But my counter to that was, you're not going to win anything next year. Like, you're not going to win a Super Bowl. So with one year of brutal cap, I'd rather take that really heavy cap hit. As you mentioned, maybe you take that $10 million to get something better in return because next year is not a win-now type of season. So that, that's the way I kind of look at that as well. Well, and keep in mind, guys, too, that there's teams out there that, you know, the market hasn't fully developed itself yet. I mean, there's quarterbacks out there that, that, or at least teams that have indicated they might move on from their quarterback. You know, the Raiders say, like, maybe we'll move on from Derek Carr or Jimmy Garoppolo from the Niners or Cam Newton from the Patriots, you know. So until those teams figure out what they're going to do, you're not fully sure. R- right now, we just love to lock in on Bears and Colts, Bears and Colts, Bears and Colts. But all the pieces are interconnected, and none of those dominoes have fallen yet. And can they afford to wait that long until other teams are out there? You you know, well, I heard, it's a, I heard it's that a, earlier, too. You, you might get the best price. You, you'd hate to have that seller's remorse where you sell him, and then, like, a week later, somebody's in dire need of a quarterback or something, something changes, and you go, oh, God, I probably could have fleeced them for more. Well, that's the thing is – you know, you you never want to be the team that sets the market. You want to wait until someone else does that and then build off that. Now, someone has to set the market, but I think Howie Roseman wants to be the guy that has more ammunition to say, hey, they got a first-round pick for Darnold. I need a first-round pick and more if you want my guy. And not for nothing. I mean, there was a lot of news that the Eagles were one of the teams that watched Trevor Lawrence's workout. And, you know, there's – uh, some people out there that go, oh, are they going to, is, is Howie looking to make another Howie move where he, you know, he gets some picks and finds some way to maneuver himself up from six. Who knows? The, the reality is that they are probably there looking at the receiver that he was throwing to more than Trevor Lawrence. But at the end of the day, that, that gets people's attention and they think like, oh my gosh, you know, I mean, listen, when you're four, 11 and one, everything is off the table. You can't write anything off. Could you imagine, obviously it's not going to happen, but could you imagine this city if Howie Roseman went up to one and snagged Trevor Lawrence? Do you think people would hate Howie Roseman the day after? Do I think they'd hate No, I, I don't. I, well, no, obviously they, they wouldn't hate him, but it's just funny that, I you know. I want to know the price tag of what, what did you give up? Did you, did you, did do you have Trevor Lawrence and nobody else? Well, then, yeah, they're absolutely going to be screaming. All right, well, let me, let, let me ask you so this. Many problems. There was a mock draft, uh, Pro Football Focus did a mock draft on uh i guess it was saturday or sunday and Mm -hmm. in that mock draft maybe it was yesterday actually and in that mock draft they had the eagles trading up to three to get justin fields Mm, justin fields my oh these mock drafts you know uh, i i feel like and i heard uh when you were off yesterday gil because i do listen to the show i heard broads and uh, josh talking about Mock drafts don't mean CRAP until you get to like the day before and even then you really don't don't. it's it's more of an indication of what the person doing the mock draft is hearing. Yeah, I relate it more towards, I said it was like the wins and losses before a season. You do the wins and losses because it's a part of football and it's fun. You're never going to be right. You're always (laughs) wrong. The mock draft is, Uh, it's part of the football draft, but you're never really right. It's just part of the fun. I wish I had that family guy clip queued up where he's playing golf and, and Lois is like, why do you do this? And he goes, cause it's fun. It's fun. Okay. And he's hitting his bowl in the water and he's cursing. He's throwing the clubs in the water or like PT launching his nine iron down there at Cape Bay County Gill. It's fun. <laughs> at least you didn't post the seven though during Pebble beach. Oh, that's my guy, man. You know, that's my guy from Nebraska, Nate Lashley. My heart bled for him. I felt so bad. He had a chance to win. He won the Rocket Mortgage, I guess it's been two years ago now, and kind of a stat got himself on tour as a regular player. But this would have, this would have backed it up, validated that he wasn't a flash in the pan. And Should he be it. fine for what he did to the green there, the putting green? People are not happy with that little slam of the putter there. Oh, I, I didn't. I didn't catch it. I mean, I don't think he damaged it. Listen, Tiger's done worse. I mean, if, you know, uh, uh, it's just uh, the fact that now the camera sees all. I mean, at the end of the day, look for you, me, Gil. If somebody handed any of us over three hundred thousand dollars, we'd be happier than a pig, and you know what? But uh, for him, he had a chance to win the tournament, and he just gave it away. So it was really. really it was a nice putt by Daniel Berger, though. Two eagles in the final round. I was watching. Well, yeah. So I wasn't watching. 
But, <laughs> we know. That being said, um, I'm more interested in this Wentz stuff than Daniel. What was his name? Burger? Burger, yeah. Would you like a burger? No, I want Chick-fil-A. Please, go ahead. Yeah. Um, if you packaged Wentz and Ertz together, would you expect to get back some monster more? return? No, no. Or are I you saying think- that Wentz is now a throw-in? Uh, no, I think Ertz would be the throw-in, but well, I still think that's that right, man. Ertz, Ertz is right. the throw-in. I, I still think that those guys together are more attractive than those guys apart. Like if you're able to bundle them together, I think that makes them more attractive for several reasons. It, you know, it, like you, it, it gives Carson Wentz a security blanket. This is a guy that I've thrown to. I don't have to develop a rapport with the guy. I already know him. It gives the team that's getting Wentz and Ertz not one weapon but two to sell to their fan base. Look. You know, we, we added instant offense. You, you talked about it, too. Like, the only guy I thought last year receiving-wise that was worth a darn on the Bears was that Allen Robinson. Apparently, he's leaving, right? So, I mean, they, they need somebody. Which is why Wentz might say, you know what? I went through a lousy offensive line and no weapons last year. I don't need to go back to that. I bet, by the way, if he had his choice, Wentz would want to go to the Colts, Right. If, if he could pick, but that's not how the game works. Well, he doesn't get the but here's the He's thing. already engineering his exit. He doesn't get to pick the team. But here's the interesting part is that the Colts need a quarterback. Like, they are – they have a Super Bowl roster, essentially, but they lack the most important part of that Super Bowl roster. So, right. does Roseman also say, look, I know that you need a quarter. You're not going to go into this team with that roster and and Jacoby Brissett or Jacob Eason. Here's the difference. They're GM. I, I think with Chris Ballard, you're going up against a guy who, you know, I, I feel like has a little bit more knowledge of what's going on than, say, what's, what's happening in Chicago. Fair. Yeah, I, I would agree with that too, bro. I, I'm okay with that point. I, and I think that, uh, you know, Ballard's, that's the beauty of negotiations. You know, Howie Roseman thinks, look, Colts, you really want Carson Wentz. I know you want him. You know you want him. Make a good enough deal, and you can get him. And the Colts are like, we know you're over, you know, you got your you're between a rock and a hard place. We know that you don't have a lot of leverage. So we're just going to wait you out until your price comes down to what we're willing to pay. And that's that's negotiations right there, and that's why it's taking a while. Fine. Doesn't make me happy. I want I want some sort of a deal. I want something. Uh, he's Pete Thompson. This is Tuesday with Thompson. He'll be back on Friday for Happy Hour Friday with the PT. And, of course, he, like all guests, appeared via the Boardwalk Honda hotline. We should do this more often, Peter. Yeah, absolutely. Anytime you uh, want to give me a ring, ringy dingy, I'll be there. Yeah, well, uh, we got another one that says, uh, I usually go for the grilled chicken club. Not sure what number it is, but not one or two. But that's super tasty. That's from Erin in Little Egg Harbor. So she goes with the grilled chicken. And, uh, yeah, I hear they make a nice I, – I don't know that I've ever had the grilled chicken there. That's out of the box. That's an out-of-the-box I think purchase. that's a new one. Yeah. I think they just added that recently. Yeah, grilled chicken. That's much healthier. I agree. You I should go you. with that, Peter. Yeah, go right, with the, the grilled nuggets at Chick-fil-A are good. They are solid. It looks like PT's doing a little research here. Is he looking up the actual grilled chicken as we speak? Yeah, how'd you know that? You well, can see my screen. Well, Five, six, seven, eight, and nine are all the grilled meals. He's looking uh, up the one, menu. Two, three, four. He went yeah. menu. Now I would have just Googled the actual Chick fil A and like typed in the grilled. No, I like that he brought up the menu because, like I said before, I only know what one and two are. Anything else, no one ever orders. I agree with one, you on that. Regular, two, spicy deluxe, three, nuggets, four, chicken strips. Haven't you had those before? And then all the grilled stuff is five, six, seven, eight. Now, what would oh, make look- someone go strips over nuggets? I, I would never, know. I would never do that. I'm going nuggets every time over a strip. Yeah, I mean, and, when, and like Gil said, when there's a catered event or when there's like a party, and they have like that big tray of nuggets, like it's the best. The old, the old me used to like put those in like M and M's, like 